Hey, JC back here, back with the 2017 Best of NCW Life Magazine edition. And so we're moving forward. Uh, this is the last segment, so only a few videos left to show you of all the different highlights that we have this year. So first off for this segment, we're going to be starting with the 9-11 uh, Memorial Ceremony in Kashmir where uh, a very powerful speech was given that really resonated with me deeply uh, on that day. So it's still another tragedy that this country faces. But my closing marks at every speech that I gave was, is regardless of the tragedy, whether it's a hurricane, a flood, a tornado, or a terrorist attack, regardless of the nature of that tragedy, Americans always rise above that tragedy. And when we rise above that tragedy, we don't look down, we don't look back, but like our four representatives that represents everything that our country stands for, we look to the future with hope, strength, determination, and faith, and thank a gracious and loving God above for the wonderful freedom that this country so enjoys. Thank you very much. Again, a very powerful moment. Uh, during that memorial ceremony. So moving on to something a little bit more on the fun side, we had uh, this 2017 year, the winner of the Mr. Panther Award for Wenatchee High School was uh, nobody else other than Matt Springer. So here is his, uh, what would you say, award-winning um, talent show display, so to speak. And uh, so go ahead and watch this. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So wake me up when it's all over. Or when your math teacher asks if you understand how to take the third derivative of a hyperbolic trig function, so you just kind of sit there and respond with, Or when the fire alarm goes off, so you go running out of the building, screaming, hoping it's real, while sitting outside thinking, And we're gonna let it burn, burn, burn. Most frequently, getting up every morning with the same attitude. Today I don't feel like doing anything. I just want to lay in my bed. Now, I have absolutely loved high school. But with only 22 days left until graduation, there's only one thing left to say to the underclassmen. If I was you, I'd want to be me too. I'd want to be me too. I'd want to be me. I don't know who can do a backflip just standing flat. I know I would be in a lot of trouble and pain if I tried to attempt something like that. So we're going to move forward. And what was one of the most exciting, most talked about things that people were talking about this year? The solar eclipse. So I went up to Mission Ridge, and even though you know the solar eclipse passed through Oregon and then heading over to the East Coast, we still got a pretty good view of it. So here in less than one minute, you'll be able to watch the entire thing as recorded from when I was up there at Mission Ridge. That was a really cool moment, and yes, it did take a lot of time to get it edited from that two-hour uh, length of the entire solar eclipse to get it down to that minute, so I'm sorry if it was a little shaky or whatnot, but anyways, we're going to keep going forward. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with uh, Tom Potter's television show here on the NCW Live channel, The Arbiter of Stoke. 
And so when the Arbiter of Stoke first started airing, I took uh, Tom and you came on the show and we talked a little bit about, you know, what's the show doing? You know, what are you planning on doing the rest of the year? And he shared with me a little bit of his own personal story of, you know, his struggle and his battle with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Yeah. And you're going. I, I want to know mm -hmm. what that's like. Because to me, that's a really inspirational kind of way of living your life mm -hmm. and being able to, you know, go out and do things and not letting yourself be taken down. Yeah, so June of 2016, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin lymphoma. And I started chemotherapy in July of 2016 on a every two week cycle. So every other Thursday, I would go into the oncology clinic in Wenatchee and I had a portacath in my chest, which is like a little matrix style plug in and they plug in and you sit there for three and a half hours and they just dose you up with all these chemotherapy drugs. And at first I didn't even feel it. Like the first dose I got, it took about 48 hours for it to affect me at all. I felt great. I got my first dose of chemotherapy and I drove over to Seattle and I went to a whitewater kayaking guide book release party and had a blast with all of my paddling friends and came back to Leavenworth the next day and went on a mountain bike ride and I was like, this isn't so bad. And then it hit me. And then like four days of just feeling super seasick, nauseous, zero motivation. You just want to lay on the couch and chill. But since it was only every two weeks, I'd have almost a full week of feeling pretty good coming out of that slump. Mm -hmm. And since I live a pretty active lifestyle, I wanted to take advantage of that good week. So I'd try and make up for the bad week by really getting after it on the good week. And living in Leavenworth gave me the proximity to go ride my bike and go paddle the rivers and go snowboarding up at Stevens Pass and do the things I'd normally be doing without really having to travel too far for it. So I get chemo and I had a pretty consistent 36 hour buffer before I got, before I felt it. And so I made a point that every time I got chemo, I'd go do something cool right afterwards. <laughs> so I'd go get chemo, and I'd be done by about 2 in the afternoon, and then I'd go straight to Stevens Pass and race downhill bikes on the bike park. Or I'd go straight to Tumwater Canyon or Icicle Creek and paddle my kayak. And one of the things that helped me get through it was having those outlets because no matter how bad you feel, if you're sitting in your kayak at the top of a Class 5 <laughs> rapid, it doesn't matter how you feel, like you have to perform. So Tom obviously has a really powerful story of you know self perseverance, um, and if you haven't seen the Arbor of Stoke, definitely go check it out. Uh, you can find the guide listings on our website at ncwlife.com. So moving into my favorite moment of 2017 on the NCW Life magazine, it was none other than WenCon, the first year event, and was hugely popular. Everybody seemed to really love it. I enjoyed it a lot because you know most people came in, they only got to meet or get an autograph from one of these people, I got to meet everybody. I went and, you know, talked to him on camera with the microphone. And so my favorite person that I got to interview was a huge, I'm a huge fan. Um, he's a voice actor of a lot of different video games and movies and television shows, that kind of thing, a lot of animated stuff. Uh, his name's Steve Bloom. He's a voice actor. And so he was able to do a, an impersonation of my favorite video game that he's in of Call of Duty Zombies. I am joined by our big celebrity guest here at WenCon, Steve Bloom. Steve, tell uh, our viewers a little bit about yourself and how you got started as a, such a successful voice actor. I have to just continue laughing about the big celebrity guest part. I have to get that out of the way. Uh, I don't know how I got here. Honestly, it's, it's amazing. It's been a long and crazy journey, and uh, it continues on. I'm just waiting for them to figure out that they hired the wrong guy. So <laughs> well, it seems that it's worked out pretty far. I think you are the right guy, you know. Uh, so. What could you tell any, any young person who really wanted to get involved with voice acting? You know, what is something that you experienced, you know, that might have helped you uh, earlier in your career if you had known about it? Well, this piece of advice could work pretty much in any career and at any age. And I, the, the best piece of advice that I could give would be to do it because you love it, uh, not because you want to get rich or famous, because chances are neither of those things will happen. And even if they do, it won't matter if you don't love what you're doing every day. So that's, that's where I start, and I build on that. Okay, and so when I was rated in the top 5,000 players in the North American Xbox on the Revelations, the final Zombies map on Black Ops 3, I believe I might have been playing uh, Tank Dempsey, so I heard your voice. I, I've 
got a few hundreds of hours probably of hearing you do some voiceovers. Can I get maybe one or two little quotes uh, from uh, Tank Dempsey? Of course. I'm glad we slaughtered some gut bags together. Uh, this one's going to be loud. Let me back up a little. You got dead flesh on my new boots! Oorah! Awesome. Steve Bloom, and this is the NCW Life magazine at WenCon. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was a lot of fun, at least for me as a fan. I kind of geeked out right there. Um, so that wraps up our 2017 edition of the NCW Life Magazine Best Of. I hope you have enjoyed following me through this first year of the NCW Life Magazine. Expect for more coming here in 2018. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you keep watching the show. Again, I'm Jay Seebeck, and this is one last clip. It is the blooper, uh, blooper reel, that's a blooper right there, of when we went down to Ed Payne's golf shop, and I kept trying and trying and trying to uh, make it on the green, and then Ed just goes and hits it in one shot. So uh, best of 2018 to all of you from the NCW Life magazine.